God bless you for choosing to listen to this anointed message from Dr. Reverend Christopher Abulame of King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord, and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations. Be blessed as you listen. Praise the Lord. I'd like us to open our scriptures. First of all, we just want to start from this passage of scripture, and I believe that God has something to say today. He always has something to say, but I do believe that today he has something to say. God always had the last word. He has got a first word, he's got a last word. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. In Psalm chapter 31 and verse 1. I'm reading the message translation. It may not sound like the Bible that you're carrying because you're probably carrying the King James Version. He said, I run to you. The man of God said, I run to you, God. I run for my life. I have put my life in your hand. You won't drop me. You will never let me down. And so what I'm going to be talking about today is that God will never let you down. Doesn't matter where you find yourself today, I'm here to declare to you under the authority of the Holy Spirit that God will never let you down. Has someone ever disappointed you? Have you ever been let down by somebody? You may be in a place right now where you're wondering who to depend on. You are probably feeling very depressed. You have withdrawn from some of all spiritual activity that you always enjoyed you're in distress right now you're feeling discouraged sometimes even angry angry at your present situation angry at the people in your life people have failed you but the bible says that there's someone who never fails someone who will never let you down and his name is god amen and the most important or difficult test a person's faith can go through it's when a person feels like God has forsaken him. But I'm here to tell you that God is too faithful to fail. He's too good to give up on you. He's too righteous to write you off. He's too nice to neglect you. He's too wonderful to walk away from you. He's too perfect not to fulfill his promises. He's too divine to deceive. He's too truthful to turn away. Too loving to let you down. And so this is why Isaiah chapter 50 verse 7, the contemporary English version. The Bible says, but the God, Lord God keeps me from being disgraced. So I refuse to give up because I know that God will not let me down. And man, mind the words of this man. He said, I refuse to give up. Because I know that God cannot let me down. In Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28. It says, had thou not known. Have you not known these words? God speaking to the people in the day. Have you not known this word that God cannot let you down? Have you not heard this word that God cannot let you down? Have you not known and heard that he is the everlasting God? He is the Adonai, the owner and the master of everything. Have you not known that he is the creator and his name is Elohim, the God who said, let there be and there was? Have you not seen any of these things? Um, have you not known and have you not heard that this God does not faint and this God does not grow weary? In other words, he doesn't go on holiday. He doesn't go on vacation. His line is never busy. When you die, his line, he's there to listen and hear you out. Uh, have you not known these things that there's no searching of his understanding? In other words, have you not heard that God cannot let you down? And the Bible says also in Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 2 and 3. It said, when thou passest through the water. I don't know where you find yourself right now. You may be going through waters. It said, when thou passest through the rivers. It said, they shall not overflow thee. When thou go through the fire. He said, your hair shall not be singed. In other words, you will never be burned. He said, the flame shall not kindle upon you. He said, because I am the Lord, thy God. In other words, I am the owner of everything, both the water and the fire. And I command them what to do. 
He said, the Holy One of Israel, my Savior, I gave Egypt for the ransom, Ethiopia and Sheba for thee. And now, when you look at this word, it looks far-fetched. But I want to draw your attention to what happened in the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel. And Daniel is a masterpiece of scripture that tells us how God judges. And that goes with the name of Daniel that means the Lord is judge. And so it was that Nebuchadnezzar, by the allowing God allowing him to do this, have overrun Israel and took them captive men, choice men, who could serve in his own palace. And there was Daniel, there was Shadrach, there was Meshach, there was Abednego. And so the Bible makes us understand that Nebuchadnezzar had a portion of food and wine for everyone that enrolled in his college. They were to do three years of learning, learning the skills of the Chinese. So that after that, they'll become wise men and magicians in the land. And they will serve Nebuchadnezzar. And so these men were portioned this food. But thank God that they understood the dietary commandment of God. And Daniel, the Bible say, had found favor in, in, the, in the chief eunuch that was set over them. And said to him that, look, I don't want to defile myself of the king's meat. And my friend, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would not want to defile themselves of the king's meat. And they said, we want to dare you today to serve us vegetable. And we just want to eat leaves. And that said, we don't want no meat. And we're going to stay with that for 10 days. And let's see what Jehovah will do. Uh, because God does not give limited supply. He gives abundant supply. He is the order of every dietary in, 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 uh, ingredient. He knows everything that's there. Uh, and so when, when, when they agreed to that 10 days, and, and at the end of expiration of 10 days, the Bible says that, that Daniel and, and his contemporary uh, were 10 times better than those who were eating good food. And, and that shows to me that if God is on your side, it doesn't matter what the world brings at you. He, he can increase you in the place of nothing. And when you find yourself in the desert, he can bring food out of the desert. He did it before, and I know he can do it again. When you have no food in your refrigerator, all you need to do is to call on God's El Shaddai and tell him, God, I need you. I need you now. And God will supply all your needs according to your riches in glory. By Christ Jesus, that's what the Bible says. And you may be saying to me, Pastor, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed again. But I'm telling you now, pray on. Don't give up. If you can just hang in there and stay with God, God will come to your aid. He'll come through for you at the appointed time. And so the story continued. And Nebuchadnezzar had, had examined this, this individual for three years. And so it came a time and the aspiration of that three years, they appeared before the king. And they began to have a conversation with the king. And when the king heard their conversation, that he knew that these men were not just ordinary men, but they were extraordinary men. When God brings you for, uh, from ordinary to an extraordinary place, you are recognized by those in authority. Those around you will recognize that you are not just the man that they knew yesterday. There's something that came on you. Uh, and so also was the story of uh, Saul. Saul had been with his folks and with his bodies until the day that the oil of anointing was poured upon him. And the Bible said when they saw him, they saw that Saul began to prophesy. And folks said, it's Saul also among the prophets some of you are about to come into a place where you start to do some strange stuff that folks will look at you and say is he also among the prophet is he also among the professor i didn't know that this man is godless and you will say it's the lost doing that is marvelous in my eyes i don't know how i got there but thank god i'm here glory to god hallelujah to god and he can tell them it's not my fault it's just my time Jehovah did it, and I give him glory for it. Somebody help me praise him right now. Hallelujah. And so it came a time after the, after the king had examined this voice, and the Bible said the king began to dream. You see, when God wants to exhort you to do something for you, he can do it anyhow. You remember also how Joseph came out of the prison. It was Pharaoh began to dream after two full years. And Joseph had been forgotten. Have you been forgotten today and you feel that everybody forsook you? But I'm here to tell you that God knows your name. 
He knows everything about you. He knows your beginning, knows your end, knows everything in between. Hallelujah. He has a plan for you. Folk might have forgotten you, but El Shaddai had not forgotten you. Hold, hallelujah. Somebody help me give him glory here if you believe it. Yes, I believe it. I know Jehovah had not forgotten me. I may have found myself in the pit of this life, but the pit cannot contain me. Glory to God. I'm coming out. Hallelujah. Tell yourself you're coming out. Hallelujah. And some of you are already out. Tell yourself, I'm out. Glory to God. Yes, I am out. I'm out. Hallelujah to God. And so the king began to dream. And when King Nebuchadnezzar had this dream, he forgot about the dream. Let alone the interpretation of the dream. And he called all the magicians. Everybody that have gone ahead of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Glory be to God. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, their names were unique to the moment. One of them was God's favor. The other one was God is God. And the last one was God is my helper. Those are the meaning of the original Hebrew name. But their name were changed by the eunuch and maybe under the authority, authorization of the king to bear the Chaldean's name or the, the, the Babylonian name. But that name also was unique. It, it, it relates to royalty. It relates to one who is associated with, with skillfulness in writing. And that's what the king wanted in this man. And something was in them, seen in them, that everybody knew that these men were different. All of them, the four of them were different. And so it came a time that the king began to dream. And nobody could interpret the dream, let alone know about the dream. Nebuchadnezzar himself could not even remember. And so he called everybody, all of the magicians in all of his territory. And said, come, I need you all to tell me what I dreamt about. How can you tell somebody that I forgot about what I dreamt about? And I want you to remind me what I dreamt about. And I want you to tell me the interpretation of what I dreamt. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And, and, and so nobody, nobody could tell him. And all of the sorcerers and all of the magicians that came said to the king, no man ever asked anybody to do this type of things. And nobody can ever do this except the gods. And they were right. Except the gods. Is they said only the gods could remind you of your dream that you forgot. And only the gods can interpret this thing for you. And they could not. Nebuchadnezzar said, if nobody among you could do it, I am going to kill every single one of you. Your children, your family, they're going to die until you tell me what I dreamt about. And so the decree was issued. And in those days, the decree of the king was unchangeable. It, it was urgent. It needed to be carried out. And as I read that scripture, it tells me something that was very remarkable. It said those who were assigned to destroy all of the magicians, they were looking for Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to kill them. And I said to myself, why will they be after these boys who were not present when the king made this demand? And yet, the people were against them. It shows that there was something in them that the devil did not like. And you may be here today saying to yourself, why am I going through all I'm going through? There's something in you that the enemy doesn't like. There's an anointing on you. That the enemy doesn't like. And if he, if he can take it from you, he will. But thank God, he cannot take it from you. For whatever God has given to you, no man can take it from you. Come on, help me give him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, as I was saying, the word came to Daniel and his associate that the king was about to destroy all of those who graduated from the same college that they were. And then I sent the king's official back to him and said, tell him to give me some moments. One night, tomorrow, I have a word for him. And that is somebody who has implicit trust in his God, that his God never fails. How can you now remind somebody of a dream that he had last night and then interpret that dream for that person. 
Daniel did not see this as a difficult thing. He knew that for with man some things may be impossible. But with God nothing shall be impossible. And it was clear in his mind. Branded in his heart. That the God who broke the Red Sea in half and delivered his people out of the hands of Pharaoh and Pharaoh's army. The same God who fought their battles every step of the way and brought them into a land of promise, which he promised to Abraham many, many years before. That that God, if he stood by his word then, he would stand by his word again. And mind you, these folks were in captivity. And to them, it looked like Jehovah let them down. Why will God in heaven, who fought the Amorite, who fought the Hittite, who fought the Amalekites, and now the Babylonian came, destroyed the temples, temple that was built to God and everything that was in it, taken away by Nebuchadnezzar. Why will God allow this to happen? And that would have discouraged them and never to trust this God again. But I could hear them saying, for this God is our God. And forever he will be our God. We don't serve it because we want him to bless us. If he never bless us one more day in our lives, we'll still sing that song of Zion in a strange land. We'll still give him glory. We'll still give him praise. We'll not run away from him. We'll run towards him. Regardless of what we face in life. Because we know him that he is too loving to let us go. Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise right now. Hallelujah. And so in this situation, this man was still willing to trust the almighty. And so Daniel had sent a message to the king and said, Just give us one more day. When I come out of my closet... I'm never going to be the same again. And, and that may be the same word that you need to say to those circumstances and situations and those things that are after your life. Just give me a moment. Let me go into the presence of my God. When I come out of the presence of my God, I will not be the same again. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. And, and, and Daniel, Daniel took a moment and went before God. And, and the magicians were right and they said that no man can ever do this but God. And then they went to his God and said, God, there's a problem in the city. There's a problem in the land. We're about to be killed. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream that I need to know the dream and also interpret the dream. And the scripture says that God overnight, through his angels, ministered to Daniel. What exactly Nebuchadnezzar had dreamt about? And not only just telling him about it, but also giving him the interpretation of the dream. And so the next morning, the word came to Nebuchadnezzar and said, I have the answer to your question, the solution to your problem. It didn't come by man's knowledge. It came by the hand of the almighty God. And for Daniel, that would have been a huge risk. He, he had to really know his God and, and understand that what God has said to him is true. And then you know times God speaks to us, God tells us stuff, and we doubt God. In this circumstance, this man needed to stand before the king. And if he didn't get it right, he'll be killed right away. Hallelujah. A man or woman of God who understands that God whom he serves is not afraid to stand for God. When you stand for God, God will stand for you. When you stand for nothing, nothing will stand for you. So you need to be able to stand for God every time. And when God gave him the word, he said to the king, I'm coming tomorrow. And I'm going to tell you everything about what you're asking for. Why will Daniel have so much confidence? Because he knew it, that God cannot let him down. And so he appeared before the king and told the king everything that Jehovah had told him. And the Bible tells us that Daniel was right. And the king confirmed that Daniel was right. And so Daniel, in the presence of the king, the, you know what the Bible tells me that was very interesting? It said that king worshipped Daniel. He worshipped Daniel. Because as he saw this man narrated everything to him, he knew that it was not him. There was something about him. 
that was different. And this man, Daniel, is God. Amen. There was God in him. That was what was in the heart of the king. And the king issued a decree that a God of Daniel might be served in all of the territory. And Daniel was promoted. And upon the word that he had been promoted, and Daniel said to the king, I have three brothers. Three brothers, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I need you, king, to promote them to you. Hallelujah. But Daniel gave glory to God in all of this. Daniel chapter 2, in verse 28. But there is a God, of, a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and make known to King Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter day. There's a God in heaven. He didn't say that it was him. He didn't say it was the school that he had just completed for three years. None of the people told him, but God in heaven that revealed secret. And so declaring God to this man, after this man have heard the, the dream and the interpretation, Daniel got a promotion. Maybe, just maybe, that a circumstance that you find yourself in right now is ultimately for your promotion. And you have no idea what Jehovah's plan is for you. And that's why you can never give up nor give in. You can never run away from it, but run towards it. You can never hunker down, but come out in courage and boldness and stand in the name of your God. And Daniel was willing to do this. And after Daniel had been promoted, the Bible says, Daniel chapter 2, verse 49, and Daniel requested the king, Daniel requested the king, that he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat at the gate or in the gate of the king. Daniel had just been promoted. And Daniel requested of the king that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be promoted also. And the king obeyed the voice of Daniel. Daniel who was supposed to be a slave. Daniel who had no identity in the land of Babylon. Had no parenthood in the land of Babylon. Had no registration in the land of Babylon. Had no citizenship in the land of Babylon. Yes, made a request of the king and the king honored his request. And that tells me that it doesn't matter how I was born. Where I was born. Doesn't matter where I came out of. The scripture tells me that if there is any man anywhere that fears the Lord, that God is accepted of him and he is accepted of God. And so this man down there stood on the Lord's side. And therefore, Cedric mentioned the Abednego, not asking for a promotion, received the promotion because Daniel had a question on their behalf. And so they were promoted in the land of Babylon. And the story is just beginning. And it's also possible that Daniel had shared all of these things with Shadrach, with Meshach, and Abednego. What God can do and what God will do. And then was the beginning of the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel now had left the scene and three Hebrew boys transitioned into the scene. And the king, after he had met with Daniel, had a conversation, all of this good thing, king was happy. And king said, everybody in his territory served the Lord of Daniel. But somehow, some way, the king decided, I'm going to make another God. And made his God. And brought it out to the open on the day of dedication. Told everybody. And guess what? All of the princes, all of the people that have been promoted. Had to come together in the place of the dedication. And Cedric, Meshach, and Abednego were part of it. Now had they not been promoted to these places of honor they would not have been part of that ceremony. They didn't ask for it. They didn't campaign for it. 
But Jehovah needed to show something to the world. Some there are certain things that we don't ask for in life, but they come to us. Certain challenges that we don't ask for in life, but they come to us. What will we do when those challenges, those moments come? We rise up to the occasion and declare the glory and the power of God. And said the mention of Ben, he go rose up to the occasion. Never complained that they did not ask for this, but yet God honored them with it. And so the day of the dedication, they all came together. And the king had issued a decree that everybody, all of the princes, all of the prefects, everyone that had been appointed into an office in Babylon, must bow to his image. And now, they just overcame, not contaminating their spirit by the king's meat in disobedience to God. And here they are again, another test. To serve another God beside Jehovah. And these three men, even though they were part of the ruling echelon, yet did not corrupt themselves with what was going on in governance. They stood on the Lord's side. And so it came up to, to pass, and when they did the dedication, everybody was supposed to bow and worship. And he said, why couldn't they just bow and worship just for three minutes? But they wouldn't do it because God commanded that you shall have no other God beside me. It was not negotiable whether it was for a minute or two. Whether it was for ten minutes. Had they compromised it the first time, they'll compromise it again the second time. And they'll do it every time thereafter. But this man stood they are ground. Because they have in them that the God that they serve cannot fail, is not weary, and will not let them down. And so they stood up tall while everybody bowed before the king's image. It sounded to me like Daniel was not there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Daniel would have done the same as that thing. But God, these three men who stood up for God and say, God, we will not let you down because we know him that you will not let us down. And so they stood up. But they were noticed by others. And they came to the king and said, Oh king, look at this man that you brought out of captivity. Disrespected you. Nobody in this land will disrespect our king. Haven't you made a decree that anybody that does not bow before this Idol will be thrown in the lake of fire and be burned. And the king invited Central Mission of Bagnigo. Want to have a word with you. And he said, I heard that when everybody bowed to my idol, to my image that I've just made, you did it. Say, I want you to now do it before me. When the trumpets are sounded again, I'd like to see you bow to my image that I just made and before the king the man said oh king leave forever we have no answer for you in this matter if the God who has called us does not deliver us let it be but I know my daddy told me that God can do a sitting abundantly above all that I can ever ask or think I heard it in my Sunday school my pastor told me my Sunday school told me that God is able to deliver. That if he did it before, he's going to do it again. And the king was surprised how this man addressed him. And he said, in fury, scripture said, he was furious. Daniel chapter 3 verse 13. Then King Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded these guys to be brought before him. And commanded the man and said, heat up this fire seven times harder. So I said, that Master Bagnigo, I thought you were going into 100 degrees, but now you're going to 700 degrees temperature. <laughs> Glory to God. And Cedric would have said to Meshach, and Bagnigo would have said to them, what does it matter? What's different between the heat 100 degrees and 700 degrees? They're all heat anyway. If we perish, we perish. Hallelujah. 
But we know we're coming out strong. We're coming out bold. We know we're going to give glory to God. Hallelujah. And the other man said, or would have said, I, I, I feel this look like a job for El Shaddai. And they encouraged himself. So we're going in. But we're coming out today. We're going to be back. Glory to God. And they would have, they would have written letters and, and messages, text messages and instant messages to all of their, all of their fam family and, and, and friends and told them, you don't understand what's about to happen. We're about to go into the furnace of fire, heat it up seven times, but I'll see you on the other side. I'll see you in a minute. And the king did just as the king said, and the people did just as the king commanded. Furnace heated up seven times over. And said the mission begged, looking at this hot flame, did not, did not change their minds. They were bound, they were wrapped up, and bonded together. The Bible says that the men who threw them into the furnace, the flame of the furnace slew them. In other words, the heat was so intense that those who threw them in died immediately. And scripture tells me that Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego landed in the flame, bound. But within a split moment, all that bound them had been consumed by the flame. And they got up and started walking in the flame. Glory to God. Hallelujah. They did not run out of the flame when they all of a sudden discover that they have been freed and unbound. Bible say they were walking in the flame. They were in the flame of life. And now remember what Isaiah said. 43 verse 2 and 3. It said when thou passest through water. I, God, will be with thee through the rivers. He said, it shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest, when thou walkest through the fire, don't sit there. Keep walking. Don't give up. Keep moving. Don't give in. Get up. Dust yourself up. Because you have a God that never fails. If he didn't fail Abraham, he would not fail you. If it didn't fail Isaac, it won't fail you. If it didn't fail Jacob, it won't fail you. If it didn't fail Jesus on the cross, he would not fail you today. Jehovah never fail. Somebody give him praise in this house. They read the word that when thou walkest through fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Because I, God, I am a consuming fire. God went in there with them. And I've said this to us many times. We have a God who goes to battle with you. He doesn't send you in and stay somewhere. He goes there before you get in there. He settles the issues before you get in there. He prepares the way before you get there. He makes the way before you get there. And so God had gone ahead of Cedric, Mason, and Begnigo. When they threw them into the furnace of fire, something held them together and brought them gently down. Lose everything that was on them. They were no longer bound. Bible says that they began to walk in the fire because they knew him, that God will never let them down. That's why they were able to Believe God that they can go in and they can come out. And yes, they went in and yes, they came out. Somebody help me give him glory for what he did for them. If he did it for them, he'll do it for you again. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. And the scripture says, while this man began to walk back and forth in the flame, the king looked so intensely into what was happening because it never happened that somebody thrown into 
a hot flame of fire, heated it seven times, and it's not dead. And he looked again. And the Bible said that he saw someone else. He saw someone else. He said, I see someone else. He called them over and said, didn't we throw three men into this flame of fire? But I see someone else appear. And he'll look like the son of God. How did Nebuchadnezzar know the son of God? Hallelujah. By revelation, he saw that there was somebody else. And this person looked like the son of God. Didn't we have three people? Now we have four. What is going on here? Yes, he was right. In the fire, he said, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. Do you know that the son of man, the son of God, had been with this man all along? They were the people just, just, just didn't notice it. That God needed to manifest himself in the flame of fire for everybody to know that what had just happened was not man's work but the work of the living God and he ought to be praised in this situation in Meshach and Shadrach and Abednego. They gave God praise in that situation. Give him praise all your people. Hallelujah. He said, there is a fourth man. And I'm here to tell you today, brothers and sisters, the case of Cedric Magnigo, mentioning the Magnigo, teaches us a very fundamental lesson. There were three that went in, and there was one that came from heaven to be with them. But today, there is one that goes in. But there are three that comes to be with him out of heaven. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 3. He said, ye are dead in Christ. He said, your life is hid in Christ and Christ in God. Included in that is the Holy Spirit. So it was three men. Now, there are three persons in the Trinity that's with you. That's why we say one with God is majority. Hallelujah to God. You are not alone, glory to God. Sometimes you feel that you are not alone, but I, that you are alone, but I'm here to tell you that you are not alone. You have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That's with you every moment of the day, whether in the night or in the noon, God is there with you. Hallelujah. This is our confidence that today we are not three that go in, one goes in, and three comes with you. You carry God, you carry the Son, you carry the Holy Spirit wherever you go. And why should you be afraid? You should not be afraid of the sun by day, nor the moon by night. No weapon formed against you that shall prosper. And that's why the psalmist said, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil because I know it that God cannot let me down. Hallelujah. He will not let you down whatever the case may be. It does not matter how high, how tough it is. But I'm here to encourage you today that Jehovah would not let you down. Somebody help me give him praise in this house. If you believe it, give him glory. If you believe it, give him glory. If you believe it, give him glory. Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him worship right now. Hallelujah. If you know your God, give him praise. If you know your God cannot fail, give him praise. If you know your God cannot lie, give him praise. If you know your God can let you down, give him praise. 
If you know that your God is more than enough, give him praise. If you know that God can do anything, give him praise. If you know your impossibility are possible before God, give him praise. If you know God can lift you up, give him praise. If you know God can exhort you, give him praise. If you know God can promote you, give him praise. If you know God can do undo, give him praise. Somebody give him glory. Woo! Yes, Lord. We worship you. 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 We refuse to be discouraged today. We refuse to be discouraged today. Daddy, we encourage it no matter what situation we find ourselves. We encourage because you are God. And you are God alone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit that has been sent to discourage us. We bind them all with feet as of iron. Right now in the name of Jesus. We lose ourselves from the power of fear. We lose ourselves from the power of distress. We lose ourselves from the power of discouragement. In the mighty name of Jesus. We speak to our lives. We speak to our body. We speak to our soul. We speak to our spirit. We say it is well. In the name of Jesus. It is well in the fire. It is well in the water. It is well on the mountaintop. It is well in the valley. In the name of Jesus. Yes, we are coming out. 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 Hallelujah. Come on, give Jesus praise in this place. Give him praise in this house. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us praise his name together. Hallelujah. 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 Give him a shout. Hallelujah. Give him a shout. Hallelujah. It's your sound of victory. It's your moment of victory. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah to your name. You may be here today and you're just saying, I wish God can deliver me like he delivered said of Michigan and begged me, God. I'm here to tell you, yes, he will. Yes, he will in the name of Jesus. Yes, he will in Jesus' name. Yes, he will in the name of Jesus. And I dare you this morning to reach out to him and say, God, in short moment of outburst, serious prayer, and tell him, God, I need you to deliver me from this situation. Be specific today. If there's a situation in your life that you need God deliverance, just reach out to him and say, God, I heard about what you did for Santa Mission and Bendigo, but I'm here today to ask you to do the same for me. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I'll come back here. I'll give you glory. I'll give you praise in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth. Begin to say to him. Begin to pray in the next two minutes. Tell it to Jehovah. You need deliverance. Say God deliver me. Deliver me. Deliver me. Give me your deliverance. Let me see your deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Bible say on Mount Zion. There shall be deliverance. There shall be holiness. The sons and daughters of Jacob. They shall possess their possession. Uh, it's that moment wherein we possess everything that God has given to us. We cannot be bound. We should not be bound. Uh, let every bound in your life, uh, every bondage in your life, whatever is in your life, let it be broken in the name of Jesus. Call on God for your deliverance. One more minute. Call on God. Tell him, God deliver me. Uh, deliver me from this uh, deliver me from that make me free in the name of Jesus said the mission Benigo, they were made free they were free in the river they were free in the fire they were free in the name of Jesus oh make me free uh, Jehovah make me free uh, Jehovah make me free yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord deliverance deliverance has come deliverance has come spiritually and physically 
deliverance has come. Uh, mentally, psychologically, deliverance has come. Uh, intellectually, deliverance has come. Uh, academically, deliverance has come. Uh, maritally, deliverance has come. Transportationally, deliverance has come. Residentially, deliverance has come. Professionally, deliverance has come. Uh, Lord, we proclaim it right now that there is deliverance in the name of Jesus. We declare right now, there is deliverance in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just give him praise for it. You don't have to see it. You don't have to feel it. But you just believe it by faith. That if God said it, that settles it in the name of Jesus. You are not weary in your faith. In the mighty name of Jesus. Give him glory. Give him praise for it. Thank him in faith. Glorify him in faith. That deliverance has come your way. In the mighty name of Jesus. We are delivered. We are set free. We are delivered. We are set free. We are delivered. We are set free. Thank you Lord. Oh daddy we give you the glory. Because there shall be miracles and testimonies that will come out of this. In the mighty name of Jesus. It is well with us oh God. It is well with our family. It's where with our children. It's where with our church. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your love. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. One hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. If you have been blessed by this message or have a prayer request, we would like to hear about it. Please call us at 401-954-6188 or visit our website at www.jcisking.org. You are also welcome to join us on Sundays for 9.30 a.m. intercessory prayer and 10 a.m. services or on Wednesdays for 7 p.m. prayer and Bible study. We are located at 396 Vesey Street, off of Branch Avenue in Providence, Rhode Island. Please remember that you are always welcome at King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is King, and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations.